All right, good morning. God bless each and every one of you. It is 8.16, the 3rd of June. I got a few things to read this morning, you guys, and here we uh, got a couple of things I want to go over, you guys, about how things we can do through Christ who came here and washed us abundantly with his blood. Let's go to uh, Luke 6, chapter 6, 48. Chapter 6, 48. 6, 48. He is like a man who built his house and digged deep and laid the foundations on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Now those are those that hear the words of Christ okay, versus those that hear them but doesn't do them. Okay? Guys, that's why it says get understanding with this. Okay, you remember the wise, the foolish, those that get spit out. You know, when he says, I don't know you, depart from me. All right. But he that heareth and does not is like a man without a foundation, built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of it. Of that house was great. <clears throat> I've had dreams seeing that where, you know, like where I was standing, the place where I was staying in was standing. And then when it talks about the house washing away, I felt like I was on a cliff looking over the edges and I could see the white water washing through the sand all around me. You know, like everything around me washed away. This is how important it is, you guys, that we listen to his words. I mean, this right here, this is Jesus saying this, okay? This is him saying this, okay? So, if you don't think it's that important, a lot of people say, well, all I got to do is believe that's good enough, you know? I'm a good person. That's good enough, you know? No, we got to know his words, you know? We got to, because he says what's good. Only God in heaven is good. I've heard people saying that. I'm a good person, you know, or they're good people. Yeah, you know, I don't even know these people. How do you know who's what? I know if we follow in, in obedience, doing his will, you know, that's what's most important. You know, because otherwise, when we do it ourselves, our way, it's not his way. Then this is what you get. This is what it leads into. And a lot of these same people I'm talking about, they don't even read scripture. And what I'm reading now, they don't even consider it. Okay. Let's go to First Peter chapter two, verse eight. Chapter 2, verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. For unto all so were also, were unto also they were appointed. Guys, I want to remind you something, man. When it says this in scriptures, even some of the Hebrews that he delivered up out of Egypt, he destroyed many of them in the desert. He destroyed many of them for their lack of faith, disobedience, and all that. 
You see, it's that it's that important, you guys, that we obey him. And the Father and the Son are one. All right, let's go to uh, Romans six eleven. Six eleven. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. It's that important, you guys, that you don't. Um, you know, we have to follow the Lord in spirit, be in spirit. As to live, you know, and separate from this world. You know, yeah, some of these might be going through having to work or whatever, do your life fine, but don't do what the world is doing. You know, if they're all taking the injection, do it. Because this, this, this tells you the terrors are being gathered first. Okay. And I see them all around the world right now. That's what's being gathered. When you're doing what the world is doing, the world will love their own. Neither yield your members as an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as an instrument of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? It says, God forbid. Know you not to whom you yield yourself servant to? Obey his servant you are, whether sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Guys, there's a lot of people with seared consciences out there saying everybody does. You know, oh, he'll understand if you do. <laughs> Remember, God's wrath's coming down here for sinners and ungodly people. And it's over here. All right, let's go to 23, 623. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there it is. That's plain and simple, okay? Sin is death. Disobedience is sin. God hates sin, and he's coming down here for sinners. Sinners. Which we all were. And then you, then you look at Ephesians 2. When he quickened them. I can say that for me. Personally, I can say that for me. When he woke me up, and, and I seen what was going on here, the scales removed my eyes, I was dead in sin. Just as Ephesians 2 says. Did I continue in sin? No. Did everything I could do to avoid it and separate myself from this world. And then I had to make myself ready. Because it was still, I was more, I had some of the worst attacks then. You know, and I could feel sin uh, that was in me trying to control me. My body, you know, my flesh. How real it is, man. All right, let's go to 725. Same, same thing. In Romans, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That's why we thank Christ, because now, with our mind, we know what sin is, and we know it's it's spiritual and it's of the devil, and these things they want in you. You know how you let him in? By sin. By sinning. That's what I felt when I was trying to get control of my vessel again. Getting it all out. Purging it out like that leaven. You know? I had to get it out of me. Some people won't. Their pride gets in the way. The world gets in the way. That's why I say, if you don't really die to this world, you're not going to be able to purge this other stuff out of you. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15, 57.
1557. Fifteen's a big one. All right, fifty-seven. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse fifty-seven. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to continue. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay. Be steadfast, unmovable. In other words, unmovable. When sin tries to enter in, when it tries to enter in, be like a rock. That's where we're building ourselves, upon that rock. Christ is that foundation we're building upon that. Be unmovable, like that venomous storm trying to wash you away. Be unmovable. Okay? Resist it. Overcome it. That's what it says in scriptures. All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent that beguiled Eve through your uh, subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay, now this is where, you know, if you're not reading the word, if you're not following Christ, and they and they want to tell you, oh, he died for you. So all you got to do is believe. Now, and then you're going, whoa, yeah, that is true, man. Wow, that's great. So that's all I got to do, man. Yeah, I'm going to go to the conference. I'm going to feel good. And not realizing that serpent, you know, as it deceived her, it will try to deceive you by the grace, the things that Christ did for us, and use that to try to deceive you further, you know, by not obeying his teaching, but not by not building upon the rock, you know, being unmovable. You know, getting into the word, getting understanding. A lot of these people don't have that. Okay. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Three verse nine. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but you know, trying to follow the law and being, you know, like your self righteousness, you know what I mean? Because we don't. It's just in it's in us and it's in our hearts. He came to put it in our hearts, okay, that we follow him his righteousness and and we know in our hearts not to do these things as sin we don't want to do that be dead to this world all right which is of the law but that which is through the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable under his death to his death. If any means I might attain unto that resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, I followed after, if that I may apprehend. That for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Okay. Let's go to 413 in Philippians still. All right, listen to this. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You know, he gives us he gives us the strength. 
the, the willpower, our faith in him. And uh, that's why it says his grace is sufficient. You know, that's in us now. His grace is sufficient for us to overcome all these things, okay? Just follow him, but you can't, you can't do both. It says you can't serve two masters. Satan is the prince of this world. So if you're going to be trying to do both, it's, you know, you're going to fall. That's why Christ came. He said, follow me. Okay. <laughs> we can overcome sin through Christ. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Chapter 2, verse 8. It's the next page. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Getting dark here, you guys. Got a lot of rain coming. Okay. Now, the rudiments of the world, love not the world or the things that are in it, okay? The traditions of men, look at all these holidays and they're celebrating memorial and death and, you know, these are the things that destroy people. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, in him. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So you guys stay in him, and the world can't won't destroy you. All right, let's go to 2 Timothy 3.15. Timothy 3.15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, it's the scriptures, which is able to make you wise. I can't tell you how many people I meet that think it's, you know, they don't need to read it. They just need to be a good person. That's it. You got to shut the Coming down now. I hear it hit the top of the van. All right. Let's go to Titus 3 6, okay? Titus B six Timothy Titus B six which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of the Regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us. That's his blood. Okay? Washed us abundantly with it. That's why we're saved, guys. But, guys, sin is death. And Satan will deceive you in many ways, man. You got to stay away from it. Matter of fact, the world is like a snare. You know? Through Christ, yes, you can get through it. But today, the reason why he's coming, it's it's very difficult for a person to get through. Look at how the boat, the dirt is it's corrupted. You know what I'm saying? It's best if you can sever your ties with the world, making yourself ready with the word of God. All right, let's go to Hebrews 9.14. How 
much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works and serving the living God. Okay, the blood of Christ, how much more will it purge your conscience from doing dead works, sinning, that kind of stuff? Knowing that you have the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ abiding in you now, okay? How much will that, the blood of Christ, purge you from serving dead work? To serving the living God in heaven, okay? 1 Timothy 4.2 Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. These are seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. See, this, this is the importance, you guys, of having... Uh, Knowing who you are in Christ now. Okay? Cut your ties with this world. It's finished here. The churches have been corrupted. You got uh, the broke the covenants broken. They're teaching little children in schools things. And our government is corrupted. They're allowing all these things. And the police, they got their hands tied. I've seen some police, they don't like this, but they ain't doing nothing. You know, you don't even hear them speaking out about it. Why? Because they could lose their job. They've been upholding all these laws of wickedness. You, you can't serve two masters. It's time to cut the ties with this world. It's time to cut the ties with it, guys. You can't do both. Okay. God bless you guys. I hope and pray everybody out there receives a message from this. Be strong and be bold in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All who call on the name of the Lord and believe in him that he died and raised on the third day, as long as we're still here, there's hope. You can still call on him. He's a mediator. Okay, but you have to stop sinning. Okay, you don't. And it takes time to get yourself ready. Okay. God bless you guys. I love you. It's in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior.